With all the time we spend outside working in our gardens or our landscapes, we're most likely to sometime come across or have an encounter with a spider. Now Oklahoma has several species and different types of spiders, most of which are good friends to our garden because of all the harmful insects that they eat. But even though they do this without harming any of our plants, I think a lot of us like to appreciate them from a distance. We do have two species of spiders in Oklahoma that are worth taking note of, that we need to be careful of when we come across, uh, whether out in the garden or in our homes. And of these two, the most important and the most ominous is the black widow. Now the black widow is the most poisonous spider in North America. Its venom is actually 15 times as potent as that of a rattlesnake but only a small amount is injected whenever she bites. The black widow is fairly easy to recognize with the shiny black body and the characteristic bright red hourglass shape on her abdomen. Well, we actually have a black widow that's taken up residence here near one of our raised beds here at our studio garden. And if you look close, I'll show you some of the characteristics of her web that will hopefully help you recognize that. The web is built low to the ground like you can see here and it's usually built on the side of a large rock, a pile of stones or maybe a stack of firewood or some sort of structure like this raised bed here. And the structure actually gives a little bit of shelter, provides some shade where they can get out of the sun in the hot part of the day and uh, also uh, uh, hide away to uh, get away from predators. Now we just checked a few minutes ago and the black widow that owns this web is up in the corner up under this board here. And she was out a little bit earlier cutting loose a grasshopper that uh, she had caught a few days ago. She had uh, finished feeding on it and she just dropped it out of her web. Well the thing that helps me most identify a black widow spider web is this sort of lean-to shape of the web and then all this debris. You can see these uh, little pieces of mulch, little twigs, leaves, and things like that. They characteristically have this debris or this trash hanging in the web. The webs are so strong that uh, whenever they attach it to something like a, a clod of soil or even small stones, they get dragged up into the web. So they kind of dangle there. Uh, just a few days ago, I was walking by this area, and I saw the web, I saw the debris, and immediately thought that could be a black widow, and sure enough, it was. So hopefully when you're out in the garden walking by and you see a web with this debris, you'll know that it uh, potentially could be a black widow. Now, the black widows aren't that aggressive toward people. In fact, uh, they usually don't bite unless they are disturbed. They are more likely to bite, however, if they're guarding an egg sac. And unfortunately, this one does have an egg sac up in the corner. About one out of every 100 people that are bitten by a black widow actually die. And these are individuals that are usually very young or very old in age. So we really do need to be careful of the black widow spider. Well, Oklahoma's other poisonous spider is the brown recluse, like we've got captured in this little jar here. Uh, sometimes called the fiddleback spider. And we're more likely to come across these spiders in our homes rather than outside. The spider's called the fiddleback because of the characteristic fiddle-shaped marking there on its back. It's got the, the neck of the fiddle pointed toward the, uh, the rear of its abdomen. And they're called the brown recluse because they're sort of brown in color and they're very reclusive. They like to hide underneath things, out of sight and uh, don't really like to come out until nighttime. If you have a home that is five years old or older, chances are you probably have brown recluse spider somewhere in your home in the out of the way areas, perhaps in a closet or up in the attic. It's where a lot of them li like to uh, hang out and live. Now the brown recluse is different from the black widow in that while the black widow has a venom that is a neurotoxin that can be potentially fatal, the brown recluse has a hematoxin or a blood poison. And if you're bitten by this spider, you can develop a pretty nasty large sore where the skin around the area can start to die and turn black and maybe even slough off. And it kind of looks nasty and could possibly lead to a big scar. 
Not everyone's body chemistry is the same, so people will react differently if they're bitten by the brown recluse. Well, don't bother looking for a web of the brown recluse spider because they don't make any. They don't spin webs to capture their prey. They're what we call a hunting spider or an attack spider. They run down their prey and overpower them whenever they want a meal. The brown recluse are actually not that aggressive toward people. About the only way to get bitten is if you press up against one with your skin. Perhaps uh, if you're putting on a pair of coveralls that have been hanging up in uh, the garage or a closet for a long time and haven't been worn, or maybe if you're sliding a bare foot into a, a garden boot that hasn't been worn in several months. These are ways you could potentially get bitten by the brown recluse. So be careful whenever you're out in the garden shed, when you're going through containers or other supplies that haven't been touched in quite a while because there could possibly be a brown recluse hiding underneath. Well, now that I've shown you Oklahoma's two poisonous spiders, I want to show you a couple of spiders that look mean, but are really good friends to our garden. Right here, we've got a wolf spider. And I'll just open up this little plastic box here and let her out, Let's see what she looks like. There she is. See, she's got an egg sac there on her back. She'll carry that around for quite a while. Once the babies hatch out, they will piggyback and uh, ride around with her. The wolf spider, you can see, is kind of a tan or grayish color with those darker stripes. They're really quite common throughout Oklahoma. And again, a really good spider for taking out bad insects. They're similar to the brown recluse in that they don't spin webs also. Uh, they're very fast, they're very powerful, so they chase down their prey and uh, attack them that way or hide and then jump out and ambush unsuspecting bad insects. I was actually bitten by a wolf spider years ago when I was gardening, but it was totally my fault. I was pulling some weeds and accidentally grabbed a large wolf spider when I grabbed a handful of weeds and it bit me right on the finger. And it hurt a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. It, uh, of course, they're not poisonous, so it didn't leave any kind of a mark or anything like that. It startled me more than anything else. Uh, so from now on, whenever I see a wolf spider, I just let them have their space, let them go about taking care of their business of getting rid of those bad insects. Well, it's interesting, the wolf spider got its name from the belief that they hunted in packs like wolves which in actuality, they, they don't do that. They're more creatures of solitude. The last spider I want to show you is one that a lot of you are probably seeing out in your gardens right now. It's one of a group of spiders known as the orb weavers. And this one is called the Argiope spider. Uh, a lot of people just refer to these as the garden spiders. But as you can see, it's a very large spider one that builds a web in between some of the vegetation out in the garden. Very colorful spider with this black and yellow color. And sometimes whenever you get up close and uh, try to frighten them a little bit, they'll start bobbing or swaying in their web to try to scare away whatever it is. I'll try to make this one sway in her web right here. There she goes, she's kind of bouncing a little bit. Trying to sway her web back and forth to scare away whatever it is that she thinks might be trying to eat her. But the Argiope spiders are really good at reducing the number of grasshoppers that come flying or hopping through your gardens this time of the year. Well, I hope we've given you some tips to help you avoid the black widow and the brown recluse. And I also hope we've shown you that even though they may look scary, spiders are really a beneficial thing to have in the garden because they reduce a lot of the bad insects that we have. <laughs>